Hello everyone, welcome to part 4 on how to create weapon skins for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Yes, I know, it has been a long time since I made a tutorial, but finally, just before New Year's, I am making part 4 of my tutorial series. So, in this part, we will be taking a look at how to save your workbench files, so your TXT files, so you can upload it to the workshop, how to test out your skin in the actual game itself, so you can replace an already existing texture with your own texture and lastly how to actually upload it to the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Workshop. So as usual we start out by loading up our workbench and configuring our TXT file through the user interface. So for the sake of the tutorial I am using an old skin of mine called the Glock 18 Distress which is a gunsmith finish. So let's load up all the details for this in CSGO skins 2017 tutorial 4. Clock 18 Distressed, it is, used, it is using a normal map, so we go to the same folder again. Tutorial 4, Clock 18 Distressed Normal. And let's change our values here. So for Fong Exponent, I'm going for 160, 30 in Intensity, and 1 in Fong Outpost. Let's set this to 1024 for the best quality. And say ignore weapon size skill. As you can see, it is still all messed up. That is because of the main reason that we have not yet changed our offsets. As you can see, everything is, all the sliders are everywhere. And if we set everything to the left, yes, it will look how it's supposed to look. However, when we reload, or say variant in this case, it will be all messed up again. In order for it to stay good, we have to change the pattern offsets or the parameters because we are working with a static skin. Now we can press for Ryan all we want, but the only thing that is changing is the wear on the weapon skin. Let's change the maximum wear to 0.80 and let's just make it super black. So it, which one is it? I don't recall. Yeah, this one seems to be doing the, all the hard work. Let's set it to a bit of a rusty color. So now it's all rusty and now it's just clean, plain brushed metal. So this is how we want our weapon skin to look in game, pretty much. So we press save as, locate our folder where we want to save it, which is in tutorial 4, and call the txt file tutorial 4. Once you have saved, you can close the workbench since you are done there and you can exit the game. Now we are going to take a look at how we can change the Glock 18 Catacombs into a Glock 18 Distressed, so the texture we just saved. Before we can do this, we have to place our texture files inside the game folder. So, where can you find these files? I personally have a quick link and a quick access, which immediately puts me in the folder which is called CSGO Materials, Models, Weapons, Customization and Paints. So go to this folder, we have created a gunsmith finish, so we're going in the gunsmith folder and we're going to save and replace since I already placed in there because I am redoing this tutorial due to the fact that my microphone wasn't on with recording at first. And we are replacing two of these sexual files, which is Glock 18 Distress VTF and Glock 18 Distress underscore normal VTF. So we're going to be referring to these files inside another text file. This text file can be found once again for me under quick access, but for you in the CSGO folder under scripts and items called items underscore game .txt. This is the main file which refers to all the texture files and everything that the game is trying to read in terms of items is being referred to in here. Since it's such an important file, we have to make sure that we make a backup of this so we can easily revert back into the normal one when we want. So for now we are going to open items underscore game and as you can see there is a lot of referring going on. We're not interested in everything of it. We are just going to be interested in the Glock 18 catacombs. So in order to find this you have to know from which collection it is from. As you can see it is from the Chroma collection. So when we type in here item underscore sets we can see that we have set underscore community 3. I, for a fact, know that the Chroma collection is set 6, so I'm just gonna look for set community 6. And once you see this, where it refers to all the uh, texture files, you can find the name of the Glock 18 from item community set 6, which is called CU underscore Glock underscore death toll. When we're looking for this in the files, we are eventually greeted with a number number 399 and a name cu glock underscore daftal 
As you can see, it is referring to the correct file because it is a skull pattern in type 5 and all its uh, parameters. We want to change it to our parameters, so we're going to tutorial form, load up our text file that we just created in the workbench, copy our values, our parameters. So I need to make a quick revision here, and that is that I made a mistake in this video by copying a bracket on accident. This bracket here is not supposed to be copied. You only can copy everything that is between these brackets. So I found out about this mistake when I loaded up the game. So I did some After Effects magic so it won't show up in the tutorial, but make sure to only copy the information in between the two brackets and don't be stupid like me and copy the bottom part of the bracket as well. And replace them here underneath CU Glock Dev Tool. Um, in order for it to read the pattern correctly, since we placed it in the game, fo the game folder itself, we can just remove these things, so like the directory towards the folder and the extension. Just save the file. And now when we open up our game, which is currently booting, it should all be working correctly. So now that we are in game, we can actually see whether or not our texture changing has worked. When we go to inventory, we can see that our Glock 18 Catacombs has turned into the Glock 18 Distressed. And when we inspect the item, we can see that it is working correctly. So when we replace the Glock, go to a map, a little bit of self-promotion can't hurt, so I'm loading up studio. The map I have been working on for a while. which can take some time to load. And there we go. And when we join the terrorists, we can see that we have our Glock 18 all ready and working. Now, the fun thing about this is, is if you play official games with, well, in this case, the Glock 18 Catacombs, y you will be able to watch your demos, and instead of playing with the Catacombs, you will be playing with the workshop item that you are testing out in-game. So, in my case, the Glock 18 Catacombs would change in the Glock 18 Distressed, and this way you can maybe create nice um, videos which show gameplay uses uses of your uh, of your weapon skin. So now that we have our skin loaded up, we just take a quick screenshot, disconnect from the server, and go to workshop underscore publish to actually publish the weapon file. So now it's gonna be loading all the workshop submissions that I have uploaded to the workshop. It's quite a tedious process. You just have to wait for 369 submissions to load in. So I'll cut back into the video when it's actually done loading. So now that we have all loaded the weapon finishes, we can finally add a new one. You simply press the add button, go to your location where you saved an image, which for me in this case will be Glock 18 distressed images. And let's call, take the preview image one, call it tutorial four. Type a very, very nice description. Then go to where you saved your txt file, which is in tutorial 4, tutorial 4.txt. It will automatically load the VTF file since you're referring to that in the txt file. All you have to do is select the TGA file, so the actual source images for both the uh, diffuse texture and the normal texture if you are referring to a normal map. Then you sign or at least check the box called I've read the workshop FAQ and accept the terms of the Steam Workshop Contribution Agreement in which you pretty much just say I have created all the artwork myself. If you have not created the artwork yourself, please do not upload it to the workshop. You will get in some big trouble. Valve might ban you from the community workshop and that's not what you want. When you press the publish button, you will be greeted with a box in which you have to type I understand that once again you are not you are only uploading your own creations to the workshop. Then you press the OK button and it will start 
uploading or publishing the file to the workshop. In my case, it usually takes around 10 to 15 seconds. Depending on your internet speed, it can probably take up to a minute or two minutes or so. So just bear with me here. Mine is already done. So it is now uploaded to the workshop. It is not visible yet. When I press finalize, for me, it will become visible. However, you have to make sure that you included all your payment information. So to show you this, when you go to my workshop, you go to enter or update your payment info and in here you have to make sure that all the necessary payment information has been entered and validated. Everything has to be completed in here before you can publicly publish your CSGO skins. If you do not fill out this information, Valve will not accept your workshop submissions and it will not be publicly visible. It will only be visible to your friends and or when you send people a direct link to the workshop submission. So make sure you fill out this information. You can easily get to this information by just changing. This is my personal ID number and you just fill in your own number and it will take you to this page. So here we are at tutorial four. Once you have filled in and added your images through the add image tab, etc. When you're ready to publish, you just press finalize and you're done. It will be published to the workshop. If you did a collaboration with someone, you just select the user, so let's say 30% and I got 70, and just like that, the user will receive 30% of the revenue once uh, the workshop submission is accepted for in-game use. So that's about everything there is to saving your workshop items, testing them out in-game, and publishing them to the workshop. I hope this has helped some of you. I know this is a very basic tutorial, so in the next tutorial we will be taking a look at how to create patterns how which parameters you can use for patterns and all that kind of stuff so we will be taking a look at patterns in the anodized multicolored anodized airbrushed and the hydrographic finish style so without further ado um, i wish you a very happy new year and i'll see you in 2018.